This week on Most Craved. Find someone who's drift compatible because Pacific Rim 2 gets the green light. I left my Dinobots at home. And how should you spend your 4th of July? Hey everybody, I'm William Bibiani from Crave Online. I'm Jenna Bush from Geek Nation. And I'm Ryan Turk from ShockTillyDrop.com. What's up? How are you guys on? doing? <laughs> We're here to talk about some entertainment. Uh, the big news this weekend uh, was Transformers. Rocking the box office. Is that what it did? <laughs> it, well. It did. Yeah, it, it actually, yeah. It, made, and it made enough money to make Scrooge McDuck jealous. Oh, yes. that makes me sad. <laughs> By yeah. the way, I really did actually leave my Dinobots at home. I have them. You were going to bring them? I was. You gonna, are, I was. You, are you a Grimlock fan, or are you more of a... I, I is don't. there any other Dinobot who that we I have know. to think about? Well, exactly. I started. I mean, I actually I've been a Transformers fan since I was a little kid. I had Soundwave as a kid. That Soundwave was, was awesome with the cassettes. With, yes, the, with yes. the cassettes for you kids at home. A cassette is one a thing we old people <laughs> used to play music on. That's the reason why Soundwave wasn't in most of the movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But a lot of people think that it's a big news story that critics didn't like Transformers: Age no of Extinction. Way. <laughs> but it made so much money opening weekend, as yeah. if those are two related concepts. Listen, I used to get really butt hurt in the '90s <laughs> when a giant, uh, <laughs> when a giant summer movie blockbuster came out, and I would read the critic reviews, and I would actually clip them out and save them in a little like scrapbook. That's Aww. adorable. And uh, right? I would be so mad when Ebert would like, you know, piss on like Batman Returns or something. I'm like, what does he know? This movie's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter it yet. Yes, question. I had. I okay, had. There yeah, you go. I would like. I would save the reviews for later. Right. See, that's the thing. I yeah. think a lot of people get butt hurt over negative reviews for movies they haven't seen yet. Yeah. Which strikes me as a little backward. Like you well, have so much invested in liking this before you've seen it. Yeah. You'll get mad when someone says it might not be good. Listen, well, listen, look, I, I wasn't. I didn't exactly get mad when I went to go see Congo. <laughs> and, I read, and I read a review of how bad Congo was, and I was like. Well, still gonna go see it at midnight anyway. I'll yeah, come that's out, true. I mean, know? if I want if I want to see something, I'm gonna see it. Yeah. But actually, yeah. I have to say, all of the death threats and angry comments I get are usually before when I put out a review, and it's before the movie comes out. Yeah. yeah. Strangely, after the bad movie comes out, I don't get any. So. <laughs> I like to address the comment board users after the review, and I go, "So, did you see it? And if so, what did you think? Because you gave me a lashing on this review." Yeah. Often, I get this comment, and I wrote an editorial about this at Crave Online, which is, uh, "Why can't you turn your brain off? It's just a movie." Mm. Well, As okay. if critics are supposed to have really low standards. Which <laughs> well, really okay, me. no, and to to be fair, like I have liked a lot of movies that a lot of critics, other fellow critics, have mm -hmm. not liked. Yeah, sure. Um, because about. I love giant robots. I love things yeah. exploding. I think there's this need in my head to watch things blow up. I don't know, but. This, ah, God, I, okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> make things explode, but could you just spend like five more minutes on the story? Well, can you make things explode good? I mean, like, there's a difference between a bad movie that's enjoyable and a bad movie that isn't enjoyable. Yeah. And that's my problem with the argument that it's just a movie, yeah. is that that implies that all movies are just movies and you have no right to have standards. Yeah, right. Everything is equally good to you. Schindler's mm -hmm. List is just as good as Batman and Robin, and that's a lie. <laughs> you are allowed to have standards, and yeah. the reason you go to a critic is the same reason why you'd ask someone, hey, what's a good restaurant in town? You, yeah. you, you want to know what someplace good is. If they sure. say McDonald's, yeah. They're, they're a crappy friend. Yeah, at this point in the game, though, with Transformers 4, it, it, for me, when I started seeing the previews, I was like, well, that looks like business as usual. It is. Heck yeah, I'm excited. Okay. But, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, when we talk about how much it made versus the critical response, this has a built-in audience. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, well, we live... Well, especially the weekend. Well, yeah, but and the, the critics... Weekend is just marketing. Yeah, you yeah know? but like critics it, and uh, the online, you know, the online movie community and stuff, we all live in a bubble. It's a giant bubble. Yeah, it's true. And we don't realize that, that there is a lot of people living in America in the middle who don't give a crap. Yeah. And they don't... And, they'll, and they might come across our reviews, and I'm mm -hmm. not, like, putting down the work no, that no, we do. No, that's fine. But, you know, I'll go into you know, my cousin's house, and I'll see a copy of Transformers 3, and I'll go, huh. But then she'll go, oh my God, my kid loves this movie. And I'll go, all right, then he loves well, the movie. There you is know? no yeah. accounting for taste. And like critics, some critics like <laughs> Transformers movies. Yeah. I've liked a Which few ones? of them. Which ones, exactly? I liked one and three okay. <laughs> Two and four I thought were kind of is One is one is great. I think. One yeah, is no one fun. was fine, but yeah. I still I still prefer the animated. But like the real difference between like a critic and an audience member isn't that, you know, critics aren't allowed to like Michael Bay movies, yeah. or critics have to like, you know, an, uh, 
Aki Kurzmaki movie. Yeah. It's it's they that they can explain why yeah. they they're responsible for saying why something is good and why something's bad. You know, whereas a general audience member can just say I liked it. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. I, mean, I was entertained. That's yeah. totally fine. If that's yeah. only thing you're going to a movie for, that's fine. I mean, I yeah. like to think that there are people out there that'll go see the movie without having read our reviews at all. But then they want to go to their favorite writer, whether it's you, me, Jenna, whomever. Yeah, and they I want hope to, it's and me. They, uh, you first. Uh, Thank of you. Of course, of course. Um, but you know, they either want to be enlightened or think about other themes of the film, or you know, wonder what you thought and why. Yeah. It's kind of like opening the. Just the analysis of the film itself, well, it's, and I'm it's, talking about Transformers here. No, yeah. but, just, I think I think that's people talk about what 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 are critics value because they right. can't like shut down a movie before it begins because right. they used to be able to do that, and I think it has more to do with just informing the conversation, trying to get the conversation yeah. started, or little things that they picked out that maybe you didn't see the first time exactly. you saw the yeah. film. Because well, I like to find little weird. Things think about like how many movies you you see on an opening weekend when you're just jazzed and the energy is there and the audience yeah. is packed, and then you realize years later, oh, or, or even days later, oh. Oh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull wasn't that good. Yeah. Or The Phantom right. Menace wasn't that good. Right. Spider-Man well, 3 wasn't that good. Very often that's how it hits me. I'll enjoy something and then I'll pick it apart later. Okay, so but then we have something like Pacific Rim, which now has yes. Pacific Rim 2 coming. Yeah. Now, I thought the story was incredibly stupid. However, <laughs> I had so much fun watching it because hey, Jenna, Kaiju, giant Kaiju. Jenna, tell me more about your love for Transformers cartoons and how you don't like Pacific Rim. I'm gonna get in so much <laughs> trouble. No, 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 no. no. Okay, I, I really thought the I really thought the story was kind of dumb, and I didn't well, like the fact that the one girl in it all she did was keep her eyes open and stare. But, at least she didn't fall in love but, with the guy. Yes, that is true. That is true. All right. But I absolutely love the battle scenes. I mean, I would watch it again and again and again for the battle right. scenes. So I enjoyed it. Well, the thing with the thing with Pacific Rim is that first off, it didn't do that well in theaters. It did just well enough to justify a sequel, and a lot of movies did that. Terminator didn't make money until home video. Austin Powers right. didn't either, and then the sequels blew up. So I'm excited for Pacific Rim too. And a large part of that is because the story isn't great in Pacific Rim 2. It's so, or Pacific Rim 1. It's so dense. It's so much exposition just setting up this world. And now that the sequel has come along, I feel like we can just play in it and not have to exp have I ever I see no play with No, wait a minute. You guys are criticizing a film that comes to the table with an original idea and has its own original no, and idea. I did love that. I did love I've that seen it was. anime before. That's great yeah. and good, but uh, again, America probably has not. Again, uh, we live in a little bubble. So it's like while we, our film nerd brains, okay, go, yeah. oh, yeah, we could pick all of these influences out. Right. You know, everybody else looks at it and goes, oh, wow, cool. It's like, you know, Transformers meets Godzilla, whatever. But it came together with a story that had a rich mythology and it had. I knew that world. Like yeah. it told yeah. me and, that and I knew that's the world. Why I'm excited like, for the sequel. Absolutely. I right. want to see them play. I actually right. am excited ones. for the sequel. Yeah. I, I am. I'll and let me tell you, I, when I saw Pacific Rim, I mean, like, listen, I was ready for nerd tears when I walked in yeah. with joy because I was so excited. <laughs> when I came out, I was like, hmm, okay, cool. Yeah, I like Pacific Rim. I thought it was good. However, it's been on repeat on HBO Go. I've been watching it every once in a while, and I'm like, I really like this after movie. It's yeah. really, really great. And when the sequel got greenlit. Man, I was so excited. All right, uh, real fast, guys. Yeah. What, do you, what do you recommend people do, watch, see, whatever for Fourth of July? Um, I say the Indiana Jones trilogy. <gasps> Ooh. And it's only a trilogy. Let's yes. be very, very clear about yes. that. There are only three movies. <laughs> In fact, you can almost skip uh, Temple of Doom and just jump right to Last <laughs> oh, like Crusade. Temple of Doom. What do you got? What do you got for me? I just got the Wii U, so I'm playing Zelda all weekend. Okay, very patriotic of you. I really, really like that. Play that Japanese <laughs> yeah. video game. Awesome. Uh, guys, see a Frank Capra movie, see a John Ford movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Young Mr. Lincoln, or if that's too lame for you, see Dave. Dave is fun and everyone loves it. Kevin <laughs> Klein rocks. So that's it for Most Craved. We'll see you on the internet because that's where we work.